The weather moved the Chiefs inside at training camp today, but they had a lot of things to say and what could be significant in terms of the defense as well as some of the offensive weapons. We got a lot for you today on Locked On Chiefs. From the land of the free and the home of the Chiefs, this is the Locked On Chiefs podcast. Welcome back, friends and neighbors. It's Locked On Chiefs, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day for free on every platform. We are brought to you today by BetterHelp. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional therapy done securely online and available to you worldwide. They have a special offer. You get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash locked on. A lot going on, even though the Chiefs had to move inside today. We're going to go over and give you really what it means because it is significant. I'm Ryan Tracy, the founder of Rogue Analytics and Performance Consulting of NFL 33 and of RGR Football. Let's get after it. And I'm Chris Clark from Chiefs Corner. You can find me over at Chiefs Corner, Casey Chiefs Corner. You can go there and find what I am doing there. Going to be talking a lot more about training camp as it continues to roll on. I apologize. I'm on vacation, so <laughs> uh, not my normal setup, uh, doing the best I can. So I apologize a little bit, a little bit about the lighting. I know it's not uh, quite not where I want it to be, but you're doing all right. Oh. Lots to talk about, though. Practice keeps going, and... Sky Moore coming back is a big deal. Like, I was afraid he was going to be out for a couple of days, uh, maybe a week. But obviously, it was a very minor injury, and they were just being precautious. Yeah, and, and I'm glad that they were cautious with it. Um, we, we saw the, the warm-up, and they actually went to the special teams uh, period this morning. When I actually saw a couple of clips with him running out there where nobody else had actually mentioned it on, on Twitter or any of the social media, so I put it out there. and We got an update later in the day, not – just that he had practiced and that I had seen him doing the special teams work. He practiced all day. So that definitely means that it was a cautious move to pull him out yesterday. little beat up. They called it a hip injury. We'll see if that continues or if it flares back up or anything. But getting back out there the very next day, I think, is really, really positive. And it has to be for him because he and Isaiah Pacheco, two rookies, are in line to take the punt return snaps and maybe be the punt returner. That's a spe uh, specific and a very special step forward for a rookie. Yeah, it definitely is. And I think that you look at both of those guys and they're going to be going at it all, you know, all training camp long and during the preseason to try to see who's going to be able to fill that role. I think it's great to have two rookies going into that position and, and really trying to take that role because, you know, you look at what McCall Hardman has done there as a punt returner. I think they like what they, what he's done for the most part, but He's had a little bit of uh, fumbleitis at times, so I think that could be part of this. Uh, but I'm excited to see what Pacheco can do and see what Sky Moore can do as returners because I think they give them the ability to really kind of use their guys in a different way and get them acclimated to the NFL based on just special teams. Fumbalaya. Let's get away from that. It's uh, it's not a Cajun dish. It is something you don't want to get. So I, I agree. Like This could be a big step forward for the special teams unit. The Dave Tobe is, is always very adamant about his guys. He did uh, speak at the podium the other day. I guess it is a podium still. I don't know if that's what you'd call it. But a couple of guys stood out, and they included Justin Watson, who the team put up at the podium today. They included Jarese Fountain and Isaiah Pacheco. I think all those guys coming together around Sky Moore as well means that there's a whole new group of guys that appear to be in position to be core special teamers and help Dave Tobe's unit really turn itself around after what I think was a down season last year. Yeah, and the bigger story to me in that regard is that those guys, you start talking about fifth and, wide, fifth and sixth wide receiver positions, Justin Watson is going to be challenged for one of those spots right now. Fountain is – that's where he's going to make his money and that's where he's, he's going to make the team. And from what I've heard, you know, Josh Gordon has been dealing with drops. And if that continues, his chance of making this roster goes steadily downhill, uh, especially because he's not a core special teams guy or really even a special teams guy at all. Yeah, it, it does make it very difficult. And that that may be the leapfrog. Uh, with Justin Ross obviously going to the I, IR – that may remove the only two obstacles for Justin Watson, who was, I think, the longest shot when camp opened to make the roster of those four guys. Now it looks he's right in the thick of it. And specifically because they've seen what Jarese Fountain does, maybe that helps him a little bit more because he's kind of the new guy. But one guy who didn't get back out to practice today uh, is still out with a quad strain. They say it's going to be a few more days. 
That is Jody Fortson. I'm not concerned with the injury yet. Are you? I'm not concerned with the injury. I think it's it's something to watch, mainly because he got injured last year. It was a really short year for him. Uh, you hope that he's not a guy that's injury prone because he gives you something that the Chiefs don't have outside of Travis Kelsey on this roster. And that could be something that they could really use to help spell Travis Kelsey. I, I think that's really the, the number one thing. And if you missed our show yesterday, folks, we talked to Matt Derrick and as the tight end group evolves, four is looks like it's becoming more and more important where you make up for that, whether it's the offensive line group, the running back group, et cetera, et cetera. It, it's going to come in there, but Jody Fortson has become the tight end too. It is not really much of a question at this point. It is role players beyond that. Some passing downs for Noah Gray, some sneak <laughs> reps for Blake Bell. Uh, in fact, Blake had a nice catch out at uh, the indoor facility today. Yep. Kudos to him. Um, but it, it does look like it's going to become specialties after Jody Fortson. So well, let's see and, how he comes back. And Noah Gray got mentioned for special teams as well. So that's something to watch. Uh, you know, he's making a contribution there. And I think that there was no chance he was not going to be on the roster this year. So uh, it's not surprising. But I think he's going to be tied in three, maybe tied in four. Uh, his spot's pretty safe, but to see him getting called out for his special teams play really is going to help that stock as well. I agree. I'm looking forward to it. Let, let's see how that shakes out. What is shaking out is possibly a big shake up on the defense. We're going to talk about that coming next. Let me tell you about our friends over at Bill Bar, which I'm not going to lie. I could actually use one of these right now. I did not have lunch. Uh, I was out swimming, so I really would prefer to get some Bill Bar Puffs. They're absolutely delicious. If you have not tried them yet, you're depriving yourself of life's one of life's greatest joys. Let me introduce you to the new favorite cookie dough chunk puffs. Has a light and chewy texture, real cookie dough chunks, and of course, they are 100% covered in real chocolate. All the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it. Plus, they are healthy for you. Cookie dough chunk puffs are only 160 calories, and they have a whopping 15 grams of protein in them. Run to Bill.com to snag a box for you and the family. It will be the perfect treat. And Ryan can never keep these in stock because his girls always eat them. Yeah. Go to Bill.com right now and use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Bill.com. I need a stock root is what I need. Um, some things that stood out to us today, particularly as I was watching um, what Turk Wharton had to say today. I was really intrigued by one comment that made a big difference in what we've seen in the past versus what we may see in the future. And it revolves around a topic that at the time when this hiring was made, we kind of foreshadowed the fact that this could be a game changer, a, a, a scheme shift changer kind of thing in the future. What Turk said today at the podium, folks, was that in what he's been preparing under Joe Cullen, and the new defensive line coach's tutelage is to be more of a penetrator, more of a gap shooter, less of a read and react type player. And so when it comes to the pass rush, that equates to a much more aggressive stance out of the front four. That's what Spags wants to do. He wants to get home with four. And it's always been kind of one of those speed bumps we don't talk about much is because the defensive line has not been the, the penetration gap shooting type that could be significantly changing right now, and that could have a big effect on the defense. What do you think? No, I think that could be a huge thing with the defense is you start looking and you start getting guys that are going to be more instinct-driven and going off their instincts based on that as opposed to going off of what they see on the field. They're obviously going to play quicker. And there are some people, you know, and, and you start looking at some of the guys they brought in. You know, Leo Chanel, he is a hugely instinctive player. You watched him at practice. You saw him blow people up at practice. We knew the second the pads came on, he was going to be a different player, and he is. Now, he plays linebacker. That's a little bit different, obviously, than defensive line, but it's still the same type of concept. You want to just be reacting and not reading and reacting. You want to know what your assignment is, and you want to go hit it. You, you don't want to be having to think because that half second makes a big difference in the NFL regardless of what people think, that split second can be the difference between a two-yard gain and a touchdown. And, and for Turk Wharton in particular, just to know that he's kind of being unleashed. We saw some footage of him the other day where he's 
stringing together multiple pass rush moves, something that we haven't seen a ton of in his past. Every now and then he's been able to do that. Looks like he's got his spin down a little bit better. This is all adding up to more of a pass rush or something that we can expect more production from the pat rush from the defensive tackle group itself, and that helps the whole front. Yeah, it really does. And then you start looking at what that can mean for, you know, guys like Frank Clark and guys like George Karloftis and, you know, those guys getting home in the middle are, are just going to help open up the edges as well. Uh, and, you know, Kansas City is always going to be a team, I think, that's going to blitz. So I expect that you're going to get corners coming and safeties coming and linebackers coming at different times. So the more pressure you generate, the more pressure that is going to be on the opposing quarterback, the better it's going to be for this team. And, the key is, can you hold up on the back end long enough for the pressure to get there? Because that's where Kansas City struggled at times last year. And if that is a struggle again this year, it's going to be something that's not going to be pretty on defense and that offense is going to have to score a lot of points. Luckily, I think the Kansas City Chiefs offense is in store to score a lot of points. Okay. I, I am absolutely with you on that. And that, that differential is the difference between winning games. And I look forward to that. Now the fact that Carlos Dunlop should be out at practice tomorrow. He should arrive in St. Joe later tonight, today, this afternoon. He could be there right now for all I know as we're recording this a little bit later in the afternoon, folks. So that gives the rotation a bump as well. And it does feel to me like the culmination of a couple of things, including his arrival, should lift this defensive front to the point where they could be not just uh, mediocre, but maybe rise a little bit above that. Yeah. And I think that his addition is not maybe going to be the last thing that the Chiefs do. I think that this was just a move that they saw that was available, so they went and took it. I would not be shocked to see Brett Beach go and make another move. Just be that's the way he does things. huh? I'm really interested to see what that cap space looks like. I know when you get back from vacation, you can probably break that down for me because I'm not able to keep up with it currently. Yeah, I'm probably going to look at that after. Maybe I can have an update tomorrow, um, at least for the time being. I know it's always going to be shifting, but the reality is is that they can still make a little bit more room if they need to with a couple of other players and, and restructuring things. I think they still have the ability to do that. But regardless, I think that there are some possibilities of moves. You know, you got to be looking more specifically, not necessarily anything right now, but any of the things that could be coming for cut down day, mm -hmm. which is only a month away. Ooh, it's possible I mean, there are going to be some DNs that are going to be, be cut that weren't expected to be cut. Yeah, and it would not definitely. shock me for Kansas City to be in in the market for that. Sorry, go ahead. No, I'm I'm completely with you. It would not shock me at all. And and the big thing is that just like you said earlier, protecting the secondary because it's so young and it's going to be so young. We don't know when Rashad Fenton's coming back, so that's putting right now a second rookie into that top three cornerback group. That's a little earth shattering. Um, so Rashad, get better, please, please, please. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like it actually. It, it's not that I like Rashad not being there. It's more I like Williams getting all the reps. True, true. They it, obviously it does... trust him. They obviously trust him, and they obviously think he can play. So this just means that he's going to be ready sooner rather than later. So that's good for me. Yeah, and it is a springboard. But all that coming together, the the, the pass rush getting better, being more aggressive, being more deliberate, I think will help protect those youngsters in yep. the back. And hopefully, that's the way that it works out. Uh, there's one more thing that can help the defense, and that's taking the ball away. One of your Chiefs players is aiming to be the top man in the NFL at his position. We're going to talk about Willie Gay right after this. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Life is full of twists and turns, and it's important to show up for yourself through it all. BetterHelp is online therapy that will assess your needs and can match you with your own licensed professional therapist in less than 48 hours. I have been through a lot of things in my life, including a layoff from my big tech job back in the day that actually led to me creating my podcast career. And as this has gone forward, I could have used some help back then. It would have been really beneficial for how I got through that. BetterHelp is not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional therapy done securely online and available to people worldwide. You can log on to your account anytime and send a message to a therapist, schedule a phone call, or schedule a video session. All those things can be done however you desire in making your therapy conform to what you need. And there are a few tries it might take for you to find what's right for you, but BetterHelp makes it easy and free to change therapists if needed. 
BetterHelp is a great way to invest in yourself and your future. All you have to do is visit their website and read the testimonies they'll post it daily. We have a special offer for all of our listeners right now. Get 10% off your first month over at betterhelp.com slash locked on. That's 10% off of your first month of online therapy at betterhelp.com slash locked on. I need help. I need help not getting excited about Willie Gay wanting to lead the league in the interceptions <laughs> from the linebacker spot. Um, <clears throat> talk me off well, the ledge. Can he do this? Can he? Yes. Can he stay healthy enough to do it? Yes. Uh, that's my hope. Um, I think he has the ability in the sideline, the sideline speed, uh, which is actually really going to work in his favor because the faster you are, the more ground you're going to be able to cover. Quarterbacks are going to be able to expect you to get to certain spots on the field. Um so I think he has the ability to do that. He looks like he has good hands uh, and he has good speed. So I think that's also going to help. Do I expect him to do it? Probably not. <laughs> I probably wouldn't go bet on it, a bet on mine. Uh, but it's great to see that he wants to do that and he wants to be in that type of role and you know really take that leadership position. And really, that's more of a leadership position. I understand Nick Bolton's going to be the guy that's going to be wearing the helmet, the green dot, and all that. But if Willie is able to lead the league in interceptions or even be near the top, people are going to respect him and his game just because of that, regardless of what else he says or does. And shoring up that middle ground that has been pretty fertile ground for tight ends over the last few years, I think that goes a long way in strengthening the defense overall so that it isn't such a chink in the armor that gets so much attention. At the same time, I do wonder, if you're talking about Nick Bolton and Willie Gay Jr., spending so much time developing their pass skills, their pass coverage skills specifically, it kind of falls to Leo Chanel and Elijah Lee to be the guys that maybe change that up. I feel Elijah Lee's better in coverage than he is rushing the passer, whereas I think Chanel is, is a born blitzer. Do you have any problem with, with those being the top four linebackers and how they'll be used in combination? No, not really. I think that it's Elijah Lee is really impressed Chiefs coaches to this point, so I think that that's a real positive sign for him, and I think that – if he continues to do that, he's going to easily have a roster spot on this team. And, you know, when we started looking at roster spots, I think that we kind of thought that he could be there. He could be that guy. Uh, Jermaine Carter is another one that you would expect to be there. Um, so you, you have basically five guys that you think are probably going to be your linebackers. And that may be all Kansas City chooses to carry this year. Uh, so I think that that would be good for them. The bigger question that I have, and, and here's my biggest thing, like, you look at last year, Nick Bolton was huge at doing tackles for losses. That was his specialty. That's what he was so successful at doing. So him working on his pass drops and his pass defensibility and all of that makes a lot of sense because he was already so good against the ground game, and he's not going to forget that. That's going to be something that's going to continue to be one of his strengths. So I really like the thought process of him working in that pass defense because if they can get that down, not only does it help take away tight ends, it also helps take away the running backs as well. Yeah, and that's the big deal. We heard from Andy Reid today talking about the running backs and how well they're all progressing, that, that the room is coming together as, as a unit in a way that he's pretty happy with. The, the artifice is the first thing that they did today was put the linebackers on him and let him go head-to-head -head in both some pass pro and in some routes. I think the bolstering of the running back room, even especially with guys that maybe aren't like – they're not young enough to be supreme athletes anymore, you know, in, in Rojo and McKinnon. But but the veteran aspect of that, I think the little tricks and things, I think that just hones the skills of the linebackers that much more. Yeah, no, it definitely does. And I think that's going to play into, you know, continuing to get them better and better and better. And honestly, it's going to help the Chiefs running backs as well. I mean, they have guys that we've got questions about. So, you know, can, can Clyde finally stay healthy for a full season? Can he – be that first round running back that Kansas City selected a couple of years ago. Uh, if he can step forward, that'd be huge for this offense. And and I think that you look at some of the other guys, you know, Rojo isn't really running with the ones at all, but Pacheco's gotten some snaps with the ones. Mm -hmm. McKinnon's got snaps with the ones. That's interesting to me because that basically tells you where Rojo is on the depth chart compared to everybody else. And I'm not saying he's on the outside looking in, but him not getting any first string snaps says that he is behind at least McKinnon and, and Clyde, and it sounds like Pacheco as well, just because of, of the way the snaps have gone so far. So 
that's going to be something to watch as, as camp goes along uh, because they have a lot of money invested in Rojo comparatively. Uh, so that'll be curious to see. And I have to say this because I wasn't on the show yesterday. I was really happy to see Orlando Brown get out there. I was really happy to see him be able to do what he's able to do. And I'm glad also to see Kansas City had a specific plan in, in place for him. He wasn't doing any of the team stuff, but he was doing he was doing the individual drills. He was able to get out there. He did some pass blocking snaps. They got him the work that they wanted to get him to, done, and he was able to do it, and he was in shape enough to do it. That's a good sign for this roster going forward. Yeah, yeah. A couple of reps against Mike Dana was the, the limit of his pass blocking yesterday, but he performed just fine. He, he looked like his feet were, I wouldn't say markedly better, but better than I saw late in last season. I'll tell you that in terms of, of foot speed and the way that he well, moved. So, and, and really the reality is, is that he's not in, in football shape and he won't right. be for a couple of weeks. So the chances are that his feet could look better in the next couple of weeks because he will get lighter. He will get faster just when he gets into football shape. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's always funny to me. Players, players show up, and they may not be in football shape, and then all of a sudden, two weeks later, they look a little bit different, a little bit more explosive later, a little bit faster. And people always question, well, it's, why aren't they plug and play? Well, it's because football shape is something different than what you can prepare for. It's just a different type of deal. Yeah. I'm looking forward to what happens going forward. Um, we'll see if they're still in pads. I thought this was the last day, but don't have that confirmed. So tomorrow, hopefully, the weather will cooperate, and we'll see them again. Oh, I want to say one more thing. Real quick, I also like hearing that Mahomes was the one that reached out to Brown and told him to get to camp, mm. or at least one of the people. He continues to be the leader that this team has always needed. I never question his leadership ability, but you just keep hearing things that just make him look even better and better as a player. Yeah, and, and as a leader, as the foundation of the franchise going forward, yep. I think we can all feel good about that. And we'll see if they get back out there tomorrow. We'll see what we have to tell you. A lot going on, but the progression so far is still aimed at next weekend's first preseason game, and that event is really red circled on the calendar for the team. We'll get you ready for that. We'll have more for you tomorrow after practice. Thank you for spending your time with us. We appreciate you making us your first listen. If you'd make Locked On NFL Draft Show your next listen, we would appreciate it. It's not just the draft class. It's also the rookie class that this team is going to have a lot of entries in. We talk it all, and we keep you updated on everything going on around the draft process. So thanks for checking that out as well. We appreciate your time, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.